morning to uh, Teddy and uh, Coach uh, that's joining us for tonight. Um, again, uh, if um, for those of you who want to extend their help to our frontliners, Blackwater has got a um, fundraiser. Uh, they would like to support our frontliners that we aim to provide uh, the Pasig General uh, City Hospital uh, hygiene kit kits that uh, they can use daily. Uh, you can visit Blackwater's official Facebook page on how you can help. Again, uh, good evening again, and uh, I would like to welcome uh, Teddy and uh, uh, Coach uh, Bogdan. Uh, before I go to uh, introduce the coach, again, he, he's a, an assistant coach with the Serbian national team. He coaches uh, professionally also as an assistant and was an interim coach in the Russian league. And um, um, he's going to talk about uh, the scouting uh, for tonight. I'd like to uh, introduce to you Coach uh, Bogdan Karajic. Good evening, Thanks. Coach. Good evening to you guys. Thanks for having me, Ariel and Teddy. It's uh, nice to, to be here with you guys tonight. Uh, good evening, Teddy. Can you say hi also? Um, good evening, everyone. Coach, good afternoon. All the way in Russia. Thanks. Thank you. I see. Uh, uh, coach is, uh, yeah, it's mentioned by Teddy, he's all the way from Russia. Coach, um, just, uh, just to start the ball rolling, uh, I'd like, uh, you know, to hear from you, what was your uh, coaching journey? Uh, of course, our, our attendees would like to um, uh, listen to your story. Well, again, also, I, I want to say that I hope everybody who is here is uh, healthy and uh, I hope everybody will get better in these uh, obviously hard times. Uh, about me and my journey, I, I, I'm born and raised in Serbia and in one moment of my playing career, I went in Hungary to play uh, in the uh, capital Budapest and over there I stopped playing and start studying and coaching in the same way, uh, in the same time, the youth, in youth basketball. So I, I spent in Hungary also a couple of years of my life, maybe even more than seven years where I was coaching and playing. And after that, I went in Denmark where I got assistant coach job. Then I worked as a head coach in Danish uh, top league where I also was uh, coaching a uh, Danish uh, national team. Uh, under 18 and under 20 national team uh, with with couple of friends and great people I met over there. And uh, after my episode with Denmark, I uh, I had a year off where I worked for Draft Express, uh, where I was in charge uh, in scouting international players for NBA draft. And after that, from from that period until now, I'm a, I've been assistant coach in Lokomotiv Kuban, uh, one of the let's say better what we believe at least very European clubs. And then uh, I also got uh, this great opportunity to work as a assistant coach scout for Serbia national team with uh, great coach Igor Kokoskov. So that will be on the short, uh, my coaching playing journey I had uh, so far and hoping that many more great things will come when this hard time passes. Just a quick question. How was it uh, working with uh, coach Igor? It was awesome. It was, we only had like, uh, two weeks working together because it was FIBA windows that I started from this year. I know him back uh, three, four years, but it's a, it's a kind of dream come true also working with person like he is also for your own national team, but he's a great coach, great person, uh, very easy to talk with great basketball mind, uh, knows a lot of X and O's, knows how to treat the people, how to treat the players. So I would say one of the, apologizing to others but at least from when I work with uh, one of the best and if not one of the best in Europe or maybe even whole world because it just it was unbelievable what he gave us in those two weeks period. Thank you coach for that. So coach uh, you have the floor now uh, if you want to start your presentation or if you want uh, a backgrounder of, on scouting uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Uh, because uh, also some of the guys uh, that I see are here, also watch some of my previous uh, uh, presentations. So I will start with, uh, with sharing and starting with self-scouting. So just a couple of uh, weeks ago, we, we talked about uh, team scouting and how we prepare. In one moment of this presentation, we will continue to it if there is uh, people who are interested in that part or uh, still time. But we will start with self-scouting, uh, how we do self-scouting uh, in our team, in Serbia national team and with the coaches that I work with. 
and just in general. Uh, just please confirm me, you can see my uh, screen, right? So everything yes, is good. everything good, coach. Okay, so even, uh, even though uh, somebody can be familiar with it, I always love to give these uh, this quotes, what scouting is all, all about. And then um, you have a three, what I believe, or what we believe, three types of scouting. So one is opponent scouting, one is a self-scouting, and one is individual scouting. When, you, when we talk scouting, you need to know that scouting you present to four different uh, groups, let's say, or, or people. So a certain scouting you will present to GMs, and that's individual scouting. Another scouting you will present to the head coach, also that can be individual scouting for player recruitment, both for GM and the head coach. So you need to know how to get in their mind and how to give them information that they want to hear and that they are also capable of receiving. In the same way, there is a scouting of your team that uh, applies on individual player development, on the team development, and there is also scouting of opponent that applies on how we're going to prepare the game and what we're going to do in our season against certain opponents and how we will approach the game. So, in generally, scouting is the collecting uh, data, analyzing data, making evaluation of those data, but there is a three different categories how you do it and four people that you will present this scouting to. Uh, saying that, I, I always say in terms of scouting, assistant coach role is to process or collect this data, to select what are the best data from the scouting and then to present and again to who to present. So collection, selection and present, present, presentation. So collection, selection and presentation of data to certain specific group, GMs, coaches, players, or the team. It's, where, it's a role of assistant coach in terms of scouting. Obviously that data means that you will collect the numbers, you will collect the videos, you will collect uh, some intel informations about the players, who they are, how they behave, uh, what is their family background. So all those information you need to collect, all those data you need to collect, and then again, select and present to the persons that need to be presented for benefit of your own team. Today, analytics are having very big uh, impact on the basketball. And, uh, you know, I always say analyze, but don't paralyze. So you as a coach, you, we had a great, great clinic a couple of days ago of uh, one of the best uh, European coaches, Andrea Trinchieri, who was saying how to save the time. Well, if you want to save the time for your team, you can do it, but you cannot save the time for you as a coach. So you as a coach, you need to collect as many as possible situations in order to save time for your players and head coach in order that they win the time and they have easiest, uh, easiest time absorbing information and moving forward with those. So saying that you can analyze, you can use the video, but you need to find the measure how much data uh, you need to select how many data you need to collect not to come to over over coaching and over informing the head coach or players or even gms so now the key thing in the scouting is how we at least divide it so first thing is uh, if we say let, let's this is not maybe the, the best order but let's say the first thing is player recruitment actually so when you are in certain teams you need to recruit your player and that scouting is uh, completely different topic and we will not go into it today but after that uh, player scouting in a recruitment process you are going right away on the pre-season and self-scouting from that pre-season and self-scouting you are having you will see how we divide that part and then after that once you are entering in the official games and, and, and in the season games from self-scouting you are leaving in opponent team scouting and after you play the game you will again go back on the self-scouting so opponent team scouting and self-scouting are two topics that are overlapping during the whole period of the, the season. And it's a very big and very important topics for, for a coaches that need to cover and be focused on. And uh, we will later, I hope there will be time, maybe I'm rushing or I, I just want to give you as many as possible information and ideas how we are doing. So you maybe find some inner motivation in these difficult times, how you can do, how you can maybe improve if this will improve your say or, or saying okay I'm doing better than those guys or confirming that you are doing the same so whatever I just want to give you more and more possible uh, information so I will rush in order to come and explain you self-scouting and opponent team scouting how we divide and why we do self-scouting please pay attention so we divide self-scouting on two 
two ways, player self-scouting and team self-scouting. Team self-scouting, you have three phases of it because not in every phase you do the same thing. You have a pre-season, in-season and post-season team scouting and same applies on the player scouting. If you see here, pre-season scouting, we will use to build our team for the team. So you will present, you will scout your 5 on 0 situations or last season situation that where uh, pre-season and post-season scouting is over, over, overlapping, what you will see examples. So I will present to my team, or we will present, sorry to say, like that, uh, defensive playbook, for example. You will see a, a, a couple of clips how it looks. Then we will present offensive playbook while we have idea to, uh, as idea to play for that team. And then we will present as a system coach with the head coach analysis of our practices. So this is also pre-season self-scouting. And then we will have friendly or pre-season games and we will present analysis to the head coach and to the players of those pre-season games, what will be kind of similar model that we will use in season scouting. So this part we will talk more when we are talking about in-season scouting. When we come to in-season scouting, there is a pre-game scouting, there is a post-game scouting, and there is process evaluation. So after 10 games or after half of the month or whatever you are feeling comfortable with, you need to make a breakdown uh, where you are as a team. So you need to scout what you did in the last 10 games, how does it look, present to your head coach, small doses, we will talk about the daily vitamins, present to your, your players, so you know in which, which way you should continue your season and which things you need to improve. Post-season, it's not over with scouting. So in post-season, what you need to do, you need to collect all those information and come to the conclusion. So you need to come to the conclusion and if you are in hopefully in good system, system that has con uh, continuity with the head coach, with ma majority of the players. It's very hard these days, but this is what describes success. Continuity and consistency is best quality that certain team can have. And you have many examples in Europe or in NBA all over the world that the teams that they have a one roster or one coach or half of the roster and coach or most of the coaching staff and GM together for a longer run that they are more successful. Why? Because they can bring conclusion and make evaluation of each season. So in post-season scouting, we'll prepare to head coach certain uh, informations that we kind of came to conclusion with, and then we will present him saying, okay, coach, this is what we did good. This is what we maybe need to improve. This is what affected our season in positive and negative ways. So you improve yourself as a coaches, as a staff. Uh, so when season is over, scouting is not by far not done. Then, after that conclusion, obviously, you will go and play recruitment scouting, but this is another topic. But now I will start self-scouting, also explaining player scouting, how we'll use it, and what player self-scouting is applying on. Player development. But player development, I know it's a, it's a word, word that is uh, mainly used in USA, but uh, I will call it, or we will call it, player specialization, because development is to develop certain things, but specialization is to master some things. So on this level, you need to master things also to develop, but maybe more to master certain things. And in a bit, you will find out what I'm talking about. So about player development, we have four self-scouting uh, steps. First is player evaluation. That's also part of player recruitment process. So we will evaluate who are we bringing and make a conclusion who is the player that is coming in our our team. Then after that, we will see certain skills he is having and make a trying to help him to master those skills. Or if we believe in preseason, we will use some skills to develop, to increase, to, to change certain things if we have one month period in preseason to do it. And then we will, this process of preseason will make a breakdown analysis of it. Player development at the same time during the season is pre game analysis post-game analysis and again one major process evaluation after maybe two three months or FIBA breaks when there is a FIBA windows you can do it so you need to pick right momentum you cannot just do it by default on daily basis so you need to pick momentum when you will make this evaluation in order that players and the team feel most comfortable and then post-season if player is staying in your team then you will make evaluation of the season, paper report, where, um, where you will compare paper report and video report with the one that you made one player was coming in the team. So you will see what was your prediction, how much was the difference from 
from what you expect the player will do, how much improvement both video and paper report we will show you. And then conclusion, so saying like, okay, speaking with the player, speaking with the head coach, what we need to develop player to. And then last one is skill development is, a, is where you can use self-scouting to play to help player to develop new things during the summer break because it's more comfortable both for the player and the coaches to do it during the the off season than in in season because it doesn't affect your current performance right away. Now, uh, talking about all those things, and uh, you can get caught in a technocracy. Uh, that yes, and uh, yeah, we are doing a lot of video, we are doing a lot of analytics, but if you have a low level communication with your players and uh, the communication that will develop relationship and relationship that will build the trust, nothing of those things will be, you cannot apply. So first thing first, you need to communicate with first of all your players to have a great level of communication with your head coach, with your GMs. If communication doesn't exist, none of techno technical part you are having as, a, as or technical skills you are having as a assistant coach or head coach is not going to be successful. So this communication build relationship, relationship with the trust and life with the trust is life with the meaning. And if you don't have trust, there is no reason to even work together with players, head coach. So all those technical parts on the side, this is the three stepping stones that you need to have and you need to, to build foundation on all the technical parts in uh, scouting, self-scouting, team scouting, and any other segments of the basketball, uh, basketball coach. Now, play, we recruited player, usually we didn't, usually president or GMs recruited players, obviously. So we just said yes to it, even though we put it a lot of work saying yes or no, but doesn't matter. We have the product we have, sorry to say player is a product, but we have a player that arrived. First thing, we will obviously in our teams have a team meeting where coach will just lead you into certain topics before practices and then in year with a great coach, Sasha Bradovic, we always had an individual player meeting where we will show to player his strength and weaknesses report, telling him what we saw he's good at, what we believe he's good at, what we believe his weaknesses are, what our development segments are, and what we expect from him in the future year. Obviously, we, we don't record the meeting, but we put the notes for the meeting for ourselves so we can evaluate later on. But uh, I will just uh, show you a little bit the video example. How does this uh, report look? So it's a similar to report we use in our player recruitment to show to coach or GMs. So we will make a three or four players uh, players uh, points that we believe he's very good at. And then we will tell him, OK, Sam, you are a great interior scorer. And in our system next year, we want you to utilize this uh, weak side cutting game that you had very good during your NBA time playing uh, with certain players and point guard because we have similar type of the point guard. And we really want you always to, to, to make that feel for weak side cutting because it's uh, one of the main reasons why we brought you and what we expect from you. So every time we have a dominant big guy that they want to trap. So when you are in the game with him, this is uh, what you did great in in Washington. We really want you to transfer this uh, this segment. When you are on the run, don't stop, uh, don't wait only for for your shots. We want you to crash the glass from the weak side. So I'm just dropping you examples, and there will be explanations for the player and why we want that from him and why he is very good in this segment and what he did in the past when it's come to weak side cutting or or, or in this case around the ring game. Now, it's very important. This is uh, the great book. I, I believe everybody was reading uh, Art of War. Uh, truthful words are not beautiful. Beautiful words are not truthful. So we really need to be honest to each other. If we want to have success in our, uh, our process, in our lives, we really need to be honest. We are honest with the players. We accept the same from the players. There will not always be the sugar and honey during the, the, the season process. There will always be a little bit gray zone, black and white things. So. It's understandable for process of basketball, but why I'm saying that is that uh, first step to the 
greatness is being honest. So we will like also show players his weaknesses. So we will also, well, we at least believe his weaknesses are. And then those weaknesses, we will not just say to him like, uh, okay, uh, we believe your shooting is bad or decision. No, we will break it down as a self-scouting, what I was uh, introducing you before and saying on which segments we divide self-scouting. So after the good things, we will tell him, okay, last season you had a poor decision-making during pick and roll game. 20% of your possession resulted in turnover. So we really, in the pre-season period, we really need to work on this segment because we, even though this is maybe not the major part of your game, we still want to develop this part of the game. So during the off-season, you will have your individual coach that you will do on this segment. So this is part of self-scouting. That's why I'm saying player development is self-scouting and it goes together. You cannot divide one from each other saying I'm a player development coach without doing self-scouting of the players or the team that you are having or doing something on your own that is not fitting to the situation of your team and the, and the club. So, and then we will show him example with explanation. So in the pick and roll game, you need now, for example, to change the pace, uh, to keep the dribble alive, don't jump in the crowd. So, and we will, you will see why break all those things for him in order that to develop. Uh, so you average 0 0.7 turnovers per game during pick and roll time. So it's almost, uh, almost 50% of your turnovers was coming from pick and roll game. So one example why we believe what we believe is his, his weaknesses is. And then a couple of clips of that segment where we will tell him what we want. So again, you didn't, there, it's a very low change of the pace, very slow dribble, and you don't keep dribble alive when you bring decisions. So you come in the pain, lazy, but you need to keep dribble alive because defense recovered, uh, Nash move, dribble it, kick it out, things like that we will explain as a part of the self-scouting. After that, uh, individual meeting we are obviously starting practices and i'm still on the topic of self-scouting that we use for player development so we show the full video right with the player and now every coach is assigned to certain players so obviously if you don't have a lot of coaches then you are obviously assigned to all of your players but then you need to make priorities which are the most talented one which are the most important one players and then you give them most attention so uh, player specialization or to master it. So what the process of uh, focusing and becoming expert in particular skills. So we did a breakdown of uh, when we did a player recruitment, that's a part again of self-scouting. And this is one more thing of self-scouting is. So we saw recruiting uh, Johnny O'Brien that he's taking a one leg fadeaway jumper in very high percentage when he's taking this spin move from this side. So if you see now he's making spin move, he's changing the, the pivot leg and taking fadeaway jumper. A lot of coaches or a lot of people will maybe, ah, it's a bad shot, this and that. But what we do, we analyze that shot in a recruitment process. So it's a self-scouting. We brought him and we show to the player, Johnny, it's a short video. So this video is one minute long or even less. Johnny, this is a shot you love to do. This is your daily vitamins. Before every practice, I want you to come 10 minutes, very slow rhythm or 20 or 30, whatever you agree, very slow rhythm, Johnny. And I want you to take 20 of those shots with me contesting, but very slow rhythm. It's just a daily vitamin because it's a shot you love to do, but it's a tough shot. We'll allow you to do this shot, but you need to repeat it on daily basis at least 40 shots from each side. So this is before practice, very slow rhythm because we will have two hour practice in preseason after this. And just a small daily vitamins for the player, just a small uh, skill work on the things he wants to master or we want him to become a master at. So it's not to develop some new thing. It's a thing that we really want this player to be so damn good at. So. If you see even guy walked in here, so it's a before practice, he came. And then this is, you show him video once in a week, for example, this is what we want. And then maybe on the end of the season, this part of self-scouting don't need for this move. Maybe you will, as we do, record every practice and do it from practice, but we will show you that in a bit. Then on this side, Johnny, we want you to do what uh, video is showing. So 
one dribble immediately fade away and then have this type of footwork because this is what you did last year and you didn't very very good i'm just giving examples because you can do for every technique player was doing because that's a self-scouting used for player development or self-scouting we are using for player development uh, especially this this year so again two dribbles crab dribbles very good spin move uh low level of the leg low stance sorry low, level of the leg, low stance good spin good kick good body position great job johnny we want you again 20 score from 25 shots before each practice so johnny we want we don't want to destroy you this is daily vitamins it's not in tough individual workout it's just before team practice you just have 50 each or 25 whatever you believe player need and then it will result this is clips from our season we are not saying that we made this basket no one important thing of being assistant head coach any coach is what Igor Kokoshkov is saying and I'm repeating you are a service we are all service we are serving players that they become better so it's there is no ownership in it. There is no ownership that we made this basket. This is a situation that we help player with using self-scouting, uh, implementing on individual development, that he feel comfortable taking the same move he always takes in season with us with high percentage of, of scoring. And uh, that's one example for mastering certain situation and certain move. But then we have development. So we had a, this young guy Dragan Apic uh, that we wanted to develop so we took him two years or one and a half year ago with the idea that he stay four years with us uh, in the club idea changed obviously because it's hectic time unfortunately but okay we as a coaches we need to do our part what we did this is a process that we change certain things that he become more advanced but still to stay in the in the shell or in the box who he is so you cannot now force this dragon up with position five four to become position three no but being position four and five we want you to to change small to develop small things in order to become more efficient and we will use self-scouting for it but again practice those skills if you see diet, daily vitamins you cannot just talk and talk and talk and show the video and things will happen no you need to get on the floor be with the player and do those things but always give him those daily vitamins of the coaching and of the self-scouting so this is what we do this is part of self-scouting we are using so we will show him certain clips and then we will get right on the on the floor so this is a it's a one minute video again before practice we show him we say you see this let's work on it and then maybe another thing we will add to practice that we didn't show but we will always record analyze and for us, we'll have huge database for players, small doses. For head coach, as much as he can take. For GMs, as much as he wants to take. Same goes also maybe even for some head coaches. So what we discussed or what we did, this is now individual practice in a preseason period when we won Dragan Apic because he's not as tall that he creates separation with this arm when he's asking for the ball, to ask for the ball with this arm and then once he gets the ball to catch it on the hop because yes you you jump a little bit away from the basket we understand that but defense is pushing you so you push him he pushes you when the ball is coming if you can push him on the hop in towards the basket that's even great dragon but you know you are maybe not as dominant over there they will push you away let's take that to account so he pushes you jump on the hop why so you can use both pivot legs Check and chin, use both pivot legs, and then do your go-to move. So your favorite move. One drop step, another drop step, pivot. Finish. Great example, great move. What you did two years ago because before recruitment came. So first of all, you didn't even close this guy. So you were just running around. You had a maybe chance here to stop as we trying to practice here to to elbow block him that he pushes you away no you didn't do it okay doesn't matter we are it's a development process here you need to lock him and to catch it on hop what you were doing you change the pivot leg so if you see now you are pivoting with this leg instead of catching on the hop so you can make a drop move and now 
you basically you will make a travel that referee will not call, but you will be completely out of balance because your pivot foot became this one. So you cannot create separation with first dribble. As you guys can see, the first dribble was together with this foot moving. So there is no separation, small traveling here. There is no separation here and it's immediately tougher spin to, to shut. Then again, we show him, this is another example from same practice. Here you did, this is what you need to do. This is what you did for us when you arrive in the club. So after great coach working for the big guys, the guy here, Vlada Ivanovic, now he's in Japan, used to be in China. You guys, if you know, just recommend him, it's unbelievable. So immediately great impact, lock your down, ask for the ball. And then he tried to catch it on the cop with the small changes in footwork. So it's still not comfortable. He put it a dribble, but now it's a good, good crab dribble, drop steps, and then immediately he scored. So what I'm showing here is how we use self scouting for individual development in preseason. So this is clip you will give to player in the preseason in order that he develops certain things or that he become master in things he's already good at. After that, uh, we have a general, or let's say more team tactic reports for each, for each player. And again, you see daily vitamins. Both daily vitamins apply for the court. You can't change, the video cannot obviously uh, uh, change practice, but all those daily vitamins, one, two, maybe three times a week or 10 days, you give to players one video of 10 minutes because you don't want to overcoach him with it. And there's no so many things. And also you show good and bad things. As you saw this example, this was very good. This was not so good. This was middle good. So you always play, not play with him, but nobody wants to listen only what he did bad. Like you want to show the example how it's supposed to be, example how you didn't do as you can do. So always to keep this positive mindset with honestly, this will bring you success. So uh, don't overcoach with the video, but have ready things like this. So for example, we record our practice. This is offense. We call it 25 in that moment when he, this player is coming on the, on the topic and roll. Uh, we practice when uh, in the preseason, uh, head coach Luka Bank, he wanted to practice situation if they switch five and four on the weak side. So he's hedging and you're uh, switching here. So now they made a switch that he, in this specific situation as a, his philosophy, so you need to know your head coach philosophy. He wanted immediately to attack position uh, player, defensive player number four, so position four, not to create this mismatch because it will be what he believed easier to re-switch and here immediately pass he wanted immediately to pass to one and to seal in an attack position uh, or player number four. So this player didn't do it. So he thought it's better to have one more switch. What coach, if you see by this reaction also, he was not pretty satisfied with. Because now they had a re-switch with five. So we break down the practice clip. We show it to the player. It's a self-scouting. We don't want you to do this in the game. If they are doing this type of defense, we are practicing to explore switch uh, with the four. So then same offense, for example, I'm just throwing on you how we divide self-scouting in preseason. Now they managed to recover. So they didn't switch with the four. Now we want you. So if they don't do that, if we practice another thing, now we want you to extend the empty corner pick and roll and now we want to see will they switch that one because then five will be on the one so then even if they re-switch we have a four on you so this is where we want you to continue so two different situations uh, that we are using for player development and then obviously it should be some good things when he he is doing this is just a little bit of negative examples for this player but just to get your idea how we are we are breaking down preseason self scouting for the players. Then, for head coach, we'll prepare full preseason report for players. We agree should be done. So again, Alan Williams, we have a special stats for head coach in our practices and preseason games. He mainly scored after offensive rebound in offense fist. He was efficient. 
In fast break, he was efficient. He was not efficient in all in flare option from fist in thumb side. So we have all those uh, situations. And then he had 13 out of 25 uh, made floors, so 52%. So coach, it's something that we really need to pay attention on these daily vitamins. And then head coach can see this uh, breakdowns of the self scouting from the preseason where player is seeing uh, where we show all the floors he scored all the floors he missed and then uh, we will break down shorter two three minutes video with the straight points to the player so it's not the same video it's uh, maybe we'll just take the good floors to say this is what we want you this is what we, like we did before over there but i'm just again proving some points or here's in preseason 45% around the rim on our friendly games and five practices that we analyzed. You will see why I'm talking about in a minute. So, Alan, your finishing really need to, to improve. You need to come earlier, 20, 15 minutes. So this would be maybe the main topic and bit defensively what he need to, to do. So this is also what I said, five practices. So certain practices, we will take some statistic or some analysis from it. Now, when we talk about shooting charts, when we talk about uh, player development and self-scouting role in it, and analytic, you need to be to go straight to the point. So what we did uh, back in, when I was head coach in Denmark, uh, I will show you how we tracked shooting practices. It's very hard to track every single practice. Uh, and it's very hard if you have practice, individual practice, where you will have different combination of the skills. So, for example, you want two uh, two, two shots uh, from post, uh, one coming off the screen for position for whatever you are coming as a, as a idea for, for practice. But when you have a street shooting practice with high number of repetition for certain uh, move or certain skill that you want to develop or master, uh, you bring paper and pen and you put the notes and then you put it in your computer in Excel sheet and you have this. So, for example, what we did, this was his shooting practices. So, uh, when we had this one month, we said, okay, now we are counting those shots. So, this was how it looked for from this player, Caleb Walker, now he's playing in top Belgium league. And this was, uh, we played a five, I think, friendly games. This was comparison. So, listen, guys, listen, coaches, we have... Maybe it's a small sample size, but it still, it leads us to some direction. We are working on Caleb, he's having this number of shots from here, from there, from this, like, and look at the game situation. Game model is around the rim, couple of trees. So we really need to, to maintain the situation that he's good at and to maintain or not to the crazy level he's not so good at, but let's not spend the time on those mid-range shots because he's not coming, we don't have sets for it. If he come one time, like you cannot just say like, okay, let's not do it at all. But let's not have 200 pull-ups from this in uh, this amount of the period. Rather than that, let's have those shots more. So we had, uh, he had in shooting practice 110 threes and 102, almost 200 pull-ups. And in the game, he doesn't even take it. So coaches, we made a mistake, my fault. I didn't realize or whoever fault uh, it is, it doesn't really matter, but uh, let's correct that. So let's have, let, because my opinion, you still need to go through all the type of possible scenarios, but then you analyze and you use self-scouting to see which scenario will come in bigger doses. So pull-up shots might occur and might actually for us in one game, he scored this type of shot from here that on the practice he had very low number and here he didn't even shoot as a buzzer beater. So there was the only shot he had in the season, it was buzzer beater. So I'm saying don't give up those shots, but don't put it in some big number as the shots that he's constantly doing. And this is something that will help you uh, track and, and, and develop. So we have this uh, Excel sheet where, for example, we have positions on the court. I just made it very quickly, so for your information. And we say, this is our position that he took the certain number of the shots. He made a 12 from 20, boom. Okay, it's there immediately. Then, I don't know, another position or same position, he had 25 made and 50 uh, attempts, so pretty, pretty bad uh, number, but still. And it's adding to, to what we are uh, tracking. And then for us, 
it will automatically generate this type of chart and same I will show hopefully later in the games how it will be so we can easily compare one and another using self-scouting method. Now this was all as you can see up here it's a pre-season scouting. Now let's go to in-season scouting. Some it, it goes head to head but you always need to have this individual approach in my opinion. What I saw with another coaches uh, you can't just have general like team meetings, team meetings, team. you need to give again deadly vitamins to the players. So, because they will feel important, they will feel uh, as part, and to every player, the player that is playing, the player is not playing. So both goes for player development, both goes for self-scouting player development, goes for self-scouting preparation. So pre-game, what we will do in the season, how it will look, it's, uh, we record practice, this is a player we are uh, we are talking with only those two clips so we are playing the game where we are afraid that he might get stuck on the screens we want to go under but uh, we are a bit afraid how he will react because what we wanted from him this is our opponent offense that we are running on our practice so we want you to be aggressive in order to force very high catches and you weren't aggressive enough on practice so we want this ball even to receive this player here because if they make this first pick we want to go under so we are showing him before pra next practice you know this is their horns down we want you to be more aggressive because he received ball in good position and then when this guy went under you got stuck when you are about to go under you got, you got stuck and it's easy shot in this situation you did a bit better it's still not aggressive enough but this guy also helped you by pushing his man. You managed to go under and then recover for the hedge. It is something we theoretically want because we want these long distance passes, help from the weak side, zone from this side. So this is what we want. But we need you for the game to be way more aggressive than uh, what you showed us on the practice. Because if you do the same level, we will struggle. And this is, this is it. Before next practice, self-scouting, how we use it. Game ended up. Every player is every coach is assigned to the certain player, and then we prepare video together. Or uh, it's mainly two of us working at the moment on, on all those things. So, Jeron, we agree before the game. We show the clips of mistakes of three up offense and of passing opportunities you said. We told you that they will go under, and that we want a quick pass pass because they will sag from him or or whatever was the case. So this is a passing opportunity you had. You miss both, stuck the ball too long and start playing one-on-one. -on -one. That's no go. We, we really don't want that because it will hurt the team, it will hurt us and it will hurt you. What's most, uh, most important also for your personal development. And then player can say, yeah, but I cannot pass it here. It's a not ang good angle for the pass. This was too easy or whatever. And then we say, okay, uh, here you kind of did the similar on regular pick and roll. So you rejected the screen, they stunt and help, and you had easy pass to him. You need to see, even regard, despite the size or whatever, you need to see this pass because you give up the good shot for great shot. But in the same time, this is not a good shot at all. So, you know, it's a two examples where you really needed to do job like you did here. So again, balance good and bad in that segment. So now all of a sudden you cannot tell me that you cannot recognize that pass because here you did pretty much the defense did a similar job but you made a great pass so you can do it it's just a matter of concentration and your will and desire and this is self-scouting after the game that every player individual self-scouting he will receive similar situation like before same shot you instead of taking floor you still had this guy please pay attention on the stunts but you gave up the very bad floor to make an easy layup for for a big guy so again it's just example of how those pre-game report and uh, post-game for in-season player development uh, for self-scouting looks like. Now a couple of months or a couple of games ended. We break down the big report for both for the team and for the player and we come up to conclusion after three months and let's say 16 games, in our case here. Okay, Mark D. Collins is most efficient in fast break. 
he's then uh, scoring a lot of points from uh, chest one that is offense for him. Then we go, we, because we have video for it, then we go and we see how those task techniques look like. Are daily vitamins working or they are not working? Is it the same while we are practicing or completely different? Then we need to change practice routine with him. And then, uh, then we see maybe he scored 25 points, but field goal is very bad. So we change something. Then we see his shooting chart, obviously, uh, a season play type and assist usage. So how, who he play with the most. So him with Frank Gallagher in this case, with uh, Brian Kuala, who played in Japan, if you guys had a chance to see him last year. So you are passing to those big guys, but then all of a sudden the big, third big guy, Valmir Ibler, there is no successful pass from you to him. We go and see, is there any pass? Because we have our program that we break down all those things with. And then we see there is no, that, but they don't play much together. Then it's okay. Or they play a lot, but you are skipping all those passes to, to him. So this is all question we can answer right away. And something from it, something, not everything we can present to the players. What we decided after meeting with the head coach and presenting everything on the, after 15 games was only this. So nothing else. This is what Marty Collins got as his, uh, his daily, daily vitamins. So three point left hand, three point pull up jumpers. So Marty, you are taking a lot of those for 16 games. Uh, uh, you are taking a lot of left hand pull ups. We are practicing, but we would like that in the games, if it's not necessary to take it from those two position as much, but from the top, you can do whatever you want. But when you are in this position, either come here, either pass the ball, either come earlier and let's practice those positions more. So it's a conclusion that you will bring with him, with the coaching staff, with the head coach, which uh, solution going to end up being applied after, after this, this, this analysis. And then obviously you, you will show him all scored or missed, now it's from the top. I will not bother you to watch. This is a bit longer video, so it's maybe three minutes because it's all shots from that segment. And, but you will just see some of, show him everything, but you will see some of it just as idea how we use self-scouting to develop players during the season. Now, season ended. What we do, we make a paper report for us to compare it with paper report what we made when we recruited player, how he behaved, how was he on the intro meeting? Uh, how what was his weaknesses, strengths, what he improved? Uh, so we do it right away. And then we are entering in conclusion, evaluation, conclusion, and plan for the future. So for example, we had Dragan Apic, the kid I talked about, and how we use self-scouting for it is this example. Uh, so after everything, we sit with the player and we said, uh, okay, you, we will maybe have a hard time stretching the floor as a four from three-point line, but maybe mid-range will become better if slightly we lift up this shot, just because it will be harder to contest. Uh, and, uh, you know, year by year, you can become better on that mid-range shoot, shooting area, but we need to lift a little bit this shot compared to what it was. And you are in and out. Do you agree? What do you believe you should improve? And, uh, you know, so on. Now it's very important. You can do whatever you want you know, as a coach, prepare. But uh, how to say, if you don't have this communication, you don't have trust and relationship with player. And players are the, the leaders in everything. We are, again, service to help them. But this player, so nobody can have ownership on his, let's say, success. If it's success, and I believe it is that he improved his shooting, than him. So we just help him. It's not like, oh, this is what we do. No, this is what he did because he had a discipline. He had a commitment to, to get there, to make those things that he, is, he needed to, to make in order to become more successful in certain areas. Why we didn't do it during the season? We didn't do it because it will mess up his comfort zone. It will mess up a lot of things. And we don't have a lot of time in the season to do. We have a time to correct daily vitamins, to give, to master things he's good at. And then in off season, we will use self-scouting to develop players and to develop certain techniques that need to be developed that is completely new. So again, we record each practice from different angles regarding what we want to, to teach, what we want to develop. And then 
we worked with the player before every next practice. So here, if you see, it's, it was way back. It's not a good uh, arc. It's not a good elbow. You know, so we release need to be higher, and then kinetic chain need to be better. So we just show first practice. You cannot immediately change it. So that was a, one of the first practices. Then uh, you know, here he doesn't make a full extension. Ball is way too low. So it's a self scouting. That's why that my point is self scouting is not just this is why we play. This is who we are as a team, as individuals. And you use videos, data, everything to help and serve your players and the team. But again, communication and practice and repetition is the key. When I was in Denmark, they asked me what's the difference between Serbian talent and Danish talent players. And I said there, there is no difference. The math is simple. If I do one thing ten times and you do five, but we both did right. I will be the winner. But if I did a uh, 10 times wrong and you did five times on the good way, you will be the winner. So math is pretty simple. Do the right things and repeat it as much as possible in a smart way, smart way, not just work hard, work smart, you will be the winner. So this is what we try with him. And uh, this was a result after, let's say, after seven practice, we tracked, we logged, we, we made break down and said okay in that practice in one hour he had almost uh, 455 score shots and the release was a little bit better so it's not still where, where we want to be you know we use some apps different tools there is a lot of tools that can help you you just need to be creative and to have discipline and work hard in order to to help players improve then what happened what after is also that we presented to the player is this you know hola <laughs> so this guy what he did he improved this or this release thanks to the first of all his commitment hard work practice but also using self-scouting to develop it because you can tell him a million times if you don't show him it's not going to have a same obviously same effect so this was how he should now when he left uh, for the loan and this was for example before so if you see it's a big difference from the release point of the shot even though he was scoring here we believed or agree with the player did analysis that it would be harder to take off those shots in a game like situation because it's so lower and so slow so if you see now again the point of the release it's not around the ear it's a bit higher compare again what was two years before when it was pretty pretty low compared to to what he's doing now and percentages in some some areas go, went high some went low but it's not you need consistency so but this player start feeling more comfortable and i'm assured that in future he will become more and more effective from from mid-range area so example of uh, analysis self-scouting individual analysis so if you see how long was before, how higher is now when he's playing in the Spain, and it's a small victory of this player uh, that we provided some service for him to become a little bit better in some segment. Now, this was all, uh, let's say, player individual self-scouting. Now we will go in a team self-scouting uh, on the pre-season, in-season, post-season. Uh, I don't know, should I stop and ask for any question right now or we just keep uh, keep moving forward because of the time? It's uh... there, there a lot of questions coming in. Um, Coach, um, do you think in showing a player's weakness and strength video, will it make his morale bad or even start him, make him like a machine? How do you communicate with him? But that, that's what Coach I said on the beginning you know communication is is a key we will be truthful and say also what he's good at that's the first like you know the sandwich method as they are saying so first is always positive and then the weaknesses that we will show to the player are not the same weaknesses video we will show to the head coach we will sit with the head coach and tell him like maybe in the process of recruiting we made a weaknesses video where we show to the head coach that he is not capable low post he's not capable low post player but we don't want him to low post so we will only show him weaknesses that are let's say more development 
things. So, okay, Lacey, we do want you to play pick and roll, but we do want this segment to improve. And only the segment that we believe as a staff or a head coach with us, that he can really improve in this area. The segments that we believe will be hard time improving in order that not to make him robotic or not to to kill his confidence, we're not gonna show him at all. So Trevor Ness is not low post player, uh, or let's say he's not a floor guy, and then in a pre-season or recruitment process, this is the weakness we emphasized, but we're not gonna show him because we didn't brought him because of that, we brought him because of strength. But this is the weakness that we, or development area that we want to, to help him in order that he help us. So strength video will be maybe even 10 minutes long. Weaknesses video will be two, three minutes long with specific, for the player I'm talking. It's not the same for the head coach or the GM, but it will be way longer and it will be way more specific. He's not maybe switch player, but we're not gonna show him how bad he is in switching because we're not gonna switch with him. So we will just show him the weaknesses or development that we believe he can improve with us in order not to make him robotic and not to make him feeling uncomfortable working on that uh, segment. So, Coach, this is uh, scouting that are, or the reports you give to the GM, do they uh, uh, ask for it or uh, are you required to submit it? Uh, sorry, I know, of course, the head coach, yes, but uh, the GM uh, here in the Philippines, we, we don't really submit. We just uh, probably some videos of uh, imports we'd like to get, but uh, go into the specifics. We don't uh, really start a uh, practice to uh, send to you the GM. I will be also honest, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm brave, but I'll be honest with, with our GM. Uh, it's not the, let's say, easiest uh, communication that we have here. It's a person that is in charge and he's clearly showing from time to time that he want to be in charge. So in order to get our case and to explain him why we did certain moves, we will show him certain things to some extent. On some meetings, we will just not uh, not use it because we honestly, we see it as a not useful thing for us because we will lose the time and he will not change his opinion, for example. I'm just completely honest. But for the things we really want to defend our case, why we played this rotation or why we did this, we will show him some reports. And if he's patient enough to listen, he will. Sometimes he's not, so he will not even take care about it. But you know, at least it's an ownership that we can have on our work. We will do it best we can. And then we will leave rest for him or other people to judge. But at least we will know we did best we can in order to, to become more successful we can, uh, we can become, if I answered. To, to, yes. To yeah. Oh, very, very good. Very good answer. Um, among the three types, which one do? You... Okay. Sorry, go ahead, Teddy. Go. Um, uh, coach, not, not every player is receptive to criticism or constructive const constructive criticism. How do you um, communicate with the players so that they'll be more receptive to your uh, input? During the, the recruitment period, we will obviously pay attention a lot of, our, as in USA, they call intel information. So who is on his social skills, uh, on family background, and so on and so on. So for some players on those intro meetings or some meetings, um, we will not be all presented. So we will not be, it will be only head coach or maybe if head coach decide it will only be certain player certain coach with player alone because if we realize as you said that he cannot accept uh, public criticism or he cannot accept uh, slightly negative input not i will not call it negative but uh, some input that doesn't emphasize how good he is or his ego or vanity will be hurted we will find different channels how to communicate not every time we will be right you know because it's uh, that's the most and most important uh, aspect of basketball is this social skill and social intelligence. So we, we are also learning both as a staff, me as a uh, assistant coach. So sometimes you will say, okay, let, let you tell him on your way because you, your personality fit better, but maybe we were wrong or no, no, he can take it. Let's throw at him. So he will take it. It will motivate him to become better. And then it turned out it was wrong uh, information. We had the wrong judgment, but to answer strictly on the question, we'll try to find different channels compared to the personalities. And in the staff, if possible, you have similar type of personality uh, of, in your coaching staff that will fit to your player. 
you will assign that coach to the player so he feel more comfortable uh, receiving the information, giving feedback and, and uh, communicating with that coach in, in general about uh, different topics and mainly about topics that are helping us to become more successful as an organization. Thanks, coach. So there's some, there's some matching of the personalities. Thank yes. you. Yes. Coach, we have other questions here. A uh, question from Ian. What are the five most essential scouting skills? Ooh, that's a good question, but uh, I, will see, I will say that uh, uh, number one is, uh, now I found uh, it's a general kind of thing, but it's a habit to, to be awake, if you know what I mean. So you really need to, to go long run, sitting in the chair, watching the games, uh, doing analysis, uh, comparing the games. So you need to have self-discipline on staying focused on the long term. Uh, for time and both daily, both uh, weekly. Uh, then you need to be a little bit technocratic, if that's a good word. So you need to put things in order. Uh, I, I believe as a scout, you cannot just, um, it's a good that if you have cognitive imagination, I, I really do believe it's a, it's a great skill, but a little bit doing the scouting, you really need to be in order and, and disciplined, knowing which method you will use and serve in order to, to make a best scouting. And then um, last, uh, last, I would say your basketball IQ obviously need to be, I'm talking about technocracy now, uh, your ba basketball IQ need to be or get higher and higher in recognizing certain situations because you need to do everything very fast. Uh, if you have a good basketball IQ recognizing, okay, this is what they do, this is what they want, this is similar to this team, what Philippines is playing is similar to what uh, Japan was playing over there, so I already can anticipate, or let's say anticipation of basketball, it will help you to become faster, because let's say then fourth one, and maybe I will conclude with it from technical part, is, is the speed. You need to do everything very fast, because uh, all this number of information, if you have it in, uh, when it's too late, then it's not useful, so you need to be very fast. And then last, or maybe first, you need to know how to present those things. So if you will come to your head coach, to your players, to GMs, to whoever you need, or to you guys to present, and uh, I'm just uh, throwing numbers, throwing numbers, being boring. Or I don't know, am I? Maybe I'm boring, sorry about that. But uh, you need to have this social skill and communication that will attract people to, to listen or to, to hear what you have to say. Because if you don't have it and you have only technical part of it, that's also not bad, but then you need to find a colleague who will present that work and then you will, uh, you know, take some credit to it, <laughs> if I can say to it, but then it's a teamwork. If you are not best presenter or communicator of what you, of data you collected and you don't know how to absorb them and which is the, the, the essential information, then maybe somebody else should uh, do it uh, instead of you, but it's not a bad thing then, you know, this is same like for players putting point guard on position one and five on position five, same in coaching staff. Everybody needs to do what he's best at in order that we all become uh, successful. Thanks, Coach. So, I, I think we can uh, continue with the presentation and then go through the other questions uh, after the presentation so we don't... Uh, um, so, Coach can finish his presentation. <laughs> okay. So... We completely finished uh, about the player personnel. Now we go to the team self-scouting. Season is starting. We had this meeting with, uh, with the players, everything. And now we have a team meeting. Very short. Coach Bob Donovan, he, he was head coach, uh, national team head coach of China. He also did this to the team. They gave daily vitamins to the team. So before practice, either bring TV on the court. Uh, you have a lot of now equipment that can support, or if you don't have budget for it, just bring regular TV, add your HDMI to computer and show one and a half minutes video and then let's go on the practice. So he was doing those things a lot. Okay, not every day because, you know, he wanted to change routines and it's very good not to become too technocratic and too boring doing same old, same old, same old. So a little bit before practice, let's go now in locker room. I just have to show you two minutes video, motivational video, for example, or whatever. I'm just taking a big picture how he did some great things uh, with, with our club here. So like that, you can use all those intro meetings not to become like a lecture for the players because obviously they are players because they maybe don't necessarily love to sit in the school. 
So maybe I'm just uh, saying. So to to start with that uh, that part, every time for us it's important to shape our defensive playbook. When we do recruitment, we also shape our defensive playbook, and we will not bring guy who is playing in drop, referring to the player uh, to the question how you don't make player robotic. Uh, you know, we saw that he's uh, in a drop all the time. We brought him to play drop defense. We didn't brought him to switch. So our, in our playbook, they will find, defensive playbook, they will find themselves. They will find their role. They're, they're, because if you do different way, it's, it's a bad uh, human resource management, to be frankly honest. So we start with transition defense because that's how we build our playbook. Transition defense, pick and all defense, isolation defense, low post defense, screen defense, special defenses, uh, full court defense, zone defense. So everything slowly on daily vitamins we don't show right away again not to become robotic but just slowly hey guys one minute video come here please today we're going to work on our transition defense and this is our rules it starts with our offensive rebound alignment so what we want in this case with coach uh, luca banki uh, we wanted to send three players on an offensive rebound. Miami Heat was playing, everybody is going back. So only one guy, only five is going on offensive rebound, but that's part of offensive rebound is part of transition defense. So we tell them, this is our rule. And, you know, don't, okay, you can judge and we can discuss is it a good or bad rule. I'm just throwing an example how we start self-scouting for the team. So what we, we will dis, uh, say, say here, three players on the rebound. After rebound, run back. Don't, we don't need you to tap the ball and do all those things. And be ready for cross matchups. So we will have cross matchups. Five, four on one, two on five. So be ready for cross matchups and spend the fouls, for example. We'll come to it later. So this is what we want. If not a bonus, we want your foul. Uh, and we want to slow their offense, having always three players on the glass. This is our transition defense rules so always crash the glass with the three guys shooter shoot point guard is going as here you see he's on the safety this is clip from previous season starting this season so some head coaches they want from their previous team so he played he was coaching let's say alba berlin and he wants to show how, how he did in alba berlin and what he expects from the same team this coach decided to show to the players what we did clips from the last season because it was maybe a bit similar. And this is what we will, you can also say, this is you, our new point guard. This is what you are doing in general. You are always running as a safety. We want you to do the same in our transition defense and so on, so on. Then, for example, this was rule coach wanted. If it's a corner shot, the third, you go away. So, okay, is it hard to recognize? I do believe it is. Do I go or do I don't go? But if it's corner shot, it's only two guys on the offensive rebound. So there was a rule of transition defense. But again, I'm in general talking about how we are starting this, let's say, self-scouting. Then, you know, always motivate them. We want you to draw charges. Coach Bob was great at it. He said, like, every charge is 500 rubles from me to you after the game. And, you know, players were just throwing themselves out. So it was just great motivation, small but great. Okay, he could afford it, obviously. But uh, then use the Euro fouls. So three players on the glass. Use the Euro fouls to stop the, the their fast break. Don't allow them to come over there. Whatever. And then in pick and then we go pick and all. Then low post, as I said, isolation. Introduce them that from Europe to NBA, if you don't play the ball, it's a foul, no check attack. It's a, a flagrant foul. So FIBA rules and things like that in defense. After that. Uh, obviously, you will have pre-prepared paper playbook, at least for three, four sets. Depends who is head coach and what he loves. Some head coaches I work with, they will have like five sets that they will for sure play, and the rest will be added when he even recognizes players better on the on the court. And then always prepare first five on zero uh, practice. You know, we record and then immediately all the sets that we were running, you give to players, uh, we put on the on the YouTube unlisted, so they, they receive, so they can watch extra and remember all offenses. So this is self-scouting with all the options that are existing in those uh, those offenses. This is a six minutes long video, obviously, because it's all options that coach wants. Is it too much or too little? 
I'm not the one to judge, I'm just throwing idea. And then you can do yourself how you want, like two minutes or one minute, one uh, option video instead of six, if you don't believe they will, they will uh, watch all six minutes. So, you know, as, as we talked about human management, you need to know who is uh, capable of what and then adjust uh, to, to, to it. Uh, Dr. Teddy had a good word, uh, he will remind me again. So, uh, personnel matchup, right? That's what what I need to write down, personnel matchup, right? He will, you will remind me after the word you use because I, I love it. Anyhow, so this is now offensive and then you will have pl uh, team playbook ready to start season. And now what we will do, we record our practices and I will go deeper in this analysis uh, when we talk about self-scouting. So uh, we, we break down every five practices or six or maybe depend how much coach wants. And we break down to the analytic things we want to know together with video. So in five on five, you saw the previous clips of player mistakes or good things in five on five when we play is it three possession or three course whoever however calls it is it when you give a live game a little bit on the on the practice so you know we take the video i log and break down in my program and then i can tell to the coach uh, on practice we didn't pretty much had any fast break situations our offense self five we scored this or that uh, and then some conclusion i i saw on the video prepare him report and then it's before the friendly games that we know, okay, don't start now friendly game with offense uh, horn side when we played it only one time during that practice and then head coach and say, oh, I only played horn side one time. I really wanted a bit more. How was success of L5? And then you tell him, well, you know, listen, we don't have open shooting from there. We don't have what we... So basically you will decide how much or coach, how much he wants to take and what are the points you want to, to come across with. But the main thing is what we do in self-scouting, we analyze our practices, we log them so in our program, and then we have all those information from not all preseason practices, but in the first two weeks from, let's say, from five to 10 practices in order to come to some conclusions, both analytically video and then to transfer to the head coach and have a, have a better understanding where we are. Same we do for the pre, every preseason game. And uh, about that, I will talk when it's come to post-season report. And then there will be pre-season things. In-season, team scouting for four for points. Pre-game team video using self-scouting. Post-game analysis for the head coach, not for the players. Uh, I'm talking about some analytics and some extra videos for head coach. And post-game team video that I will talk about. And half-season report for head coach. And that's the same report. Where we prepare a big one for head coach. And then from it, we agree, like Marty Collins, what we do for the player individually in that uh, half season uh, report, what he, we show him at least. And now, oh, sorry, uh, pre-game team video, what it means in terms of self-scouting, how we use it. So for example, uh, first or fifth or whatever game. So we had uh, in, uh, in uh, opponent team scouting that I don't believe I will have time to talk now and hear about. Uh, in, you have this segment, how to score uh, and then Sorry if I advertise another, but you have on YouTube this team scouting because maybe now it's, it will not be a time to, to, to cover it, unfortunately, but we'll see. Uh, so now how to score video, pre-game video. We are showing two clips how, to, how you can score buckets against this team. So in this specific situation, we will show to our team that, you know, when they have this low spacing, when four or five is on both screener and four, four is on dunker spot. Then they help from the weak side, low man nail. Here, even they zone it. So if we put our position four here, they will switch this. So we'll have a bigger size player uh, defended by a smaller size player. So if we play this type of spacing, uh, we'll be very successful because he will have hard time defending position four. Let's say we will emphasize you don't even need to go in the and uh, here you can stay here. What, so this will be our point how to score against them. And then we will tell them, listen, you remember our game? Uh, this, this is our offense horns down. So basically this is what we can do. From horns down, you are rolling to the dunker spot. You are short rolling. So this is what we will have against this team, what we did. You don't need to remind them when and how we did, but 
basically this is let's say self scouting so this team is playing this type of hedge we want this type of spacing in order to have this is our horns down so it's a two bigs uh, one rolling one short rolling on the, this hedge this is what we want again small size player is defending from the weak side because he needs to protect the the roller so it will be easy dunk so in pre-game it's not a big it's just clips where you want to show it, it can even be the clip for example this is their offense this is how we want to defend this is how we defend the same offense against this team so it's a one clip to remind them and give the mental strength that you can do it this is what we did this is what we want to do again and then you go on the court obviously in practice because as coach and Gary also said and everybody's saying nothing can replace practice but i'm just saying how to prepare from your part as assistant coach or in general as a head coach how you can shape this system in order to make it easier for them to understand then uh, self scouting after post game uh, not every coach but my from i work with eight or, or nine if i forgot someone from denmark to to to, to russia and, uh, other countries uh, other countries only work from hungary but okay uh, so some coaches want post game analysis some coaches depend on the game my what i saw i think you always need to give them something so like again i will repeat with co one coach with sasha brother which we always had with bob we had but depends of the time sometimes long sometimes depend of the win and lose with coach lada also mainly we had with now nowadays coach with coach igor we also we also had regardless winning and losing and why it's important what i want to say introduce so the, despite did you win and lose the game keep your system you know here i experienced that we lost one game and we watched the full game so you know coach decided it's a punishment for everybody we needed to watch full games we were two hours over there players were feeling very uncomfortable i asked on some clinics on some webinars on other coaches do they do a, you know i a lot of people said yes nba no that they don't do it europe still has this uh, auto auto as let's say authoritarian leadership in, in a lot of coaches so they they still believe in it nothing wrong with them we did uh, so good and bad show win or lose show some things and introduce next game with post game analysis so i will show you how what for example so this was uh, you don't maybe some of you don't know the team but caleb is the game we played and next game is limos limos is very well known as a transition team and uh, we start this video we won the game but we start saying next game like we did pretty solid job in transition defense but if we don't do a step better we're gonna struggle against limos because we here for, for example you stick too long down there you are point guard you need to run as fast as possible faster because another guard will be way better alan you did a good job recovering you did a good job rotating everybody did a solid after in cross matchup but if you start faster as a point guard we will not have a close out cross matchup here and you know it will not be two two points if we did a little bit better like for example here you did pretty solid job will team did a bit better job so it was a two players over there you sacrifice your body it was offensive foul this is guys what we need in next game we did a pretty good job in this game this is what we need to trans transfer in this one but in same way if we are in, not in bonus and we are in cross matchup here we came good it was good running everybody was on the time or whatever but we need to use the foul especially it's a first minute we cannot allow them opp opponent team in next game to to punish us from that now it's not the this video can also be depend you know your personnel and uh, everything uh, two three minutes long but then uh, this is from another game very next game what we prepared was every guard guard handoff we wanted to switch because usually when they have a guard guard handoff this team from it played some flare options or pin downs option for shooters regardless of which often they call guard guard handoff was leading 90% uh, of the time in such action so we wanted to guard guard switch in order to top lock and then game after even though we won this game by 20 
this was not something that we did. So you see, this player is calling, sorry, this player is calling Gargar switch, but this player is not switching. So even though we have a, let's say, decent defense after, guys, this is not what we agree. You cannot forget our things because it's simply not what we practice. And it was the same here. Obviously, we had a timeout. We discussed it was, they didn't punish us, luckily. But it's our system. We agree. We practice. We can miss that. Then in the same way, once we finally in second half decide, uh, came up to, to switch, then we were saying, when you have a guard guard switch, first of all, we needed, in this case, we needed a bit more on ball pressure because we wanted to top lock even this one. So to, to face front him, because after that, they had this Spain, Spain pick and roll or uh, yesterday, I was watching your guys' clinic, uh, coach uh, Trifunovic, my close friend, actually said, we call it in Europe, Spain, because play, Spain uh, played it first. It's not true. Play, uh, Spain played it first on the World Cup, but uh, Panathinaikos played it first, just for, for the record. And uh, coach Trinkieri was talking about that on some of the podcasts, so I will find the proof, uh, but okay. It's just because they call it Spain, but it's coach from my country that came up with but and it's not fair. Anyhow. So there we wanted face cut in order that you follow and not to allow him here. We wanted top lock for, for coming off action. So this is all the reason why we wanted guard guard switch. First two times we forgot it, third time we did it, but not good enough. So guys, for any time next games, maybe we'll not have guard guard switch. Maybe have, we will have different action, but we can't just prepare one thing and do on other. And then even when we do that thing, what we agreed to do it on the commitment effort that we did. Now, we will end up that video. So post game video with preparing. So we start preparing next game and we are ending up preparing next game. So this is a head action against Spain pick and roll. We called it head, so it was head action. So this is how we want to defend, how we defended this team. You know, our aim was when they play this head action to, to go a bit hard hedge so they cannot make a back screen. So then it's a, our regular hedge defense. So low man nail is helping. He's going on the first pass. He's going, he's zoning, whatever. So this is what we did. It was pretty good job, guys. And this is uh, again example what we did on the Spain action. So he's hedging. We want this triangle here. So when they hard head, we want triangle and then everybody react towards first pass. So again, triangle and you, if you cannot re recover and push, you exit. So that was our, our rule against Spanish pick and roll in, in uh, Spain pick and roll in this game. And after that, it's one on one responsibility. So at least Spain action we defended. And then I'm just showing you this is how we end up our post-game self-scouting meeting. We started also mentioning next game. And then again, next game is now clips just that you get idea. And we did exactly the same. So it's this triangle we wanted. He's recovering. You are, everybody's reacting towards first pass. So he's again coming low to take him, but they communicate. Now I'm back and recovered. So Spain pick is defended now it's one-on-one -on -one responsibility so just that you get idea so if you see that opponent you play now has something similar to opponent that will play in future you will use self-scouting to introduce that game again because it will be easier for for uh, for preparing it uh, and this is something uh, that will save your time and now it's time is very very crucial then also I'm, uh, we are very big on offense and everything starts from it, but also who we are, uh, sorry, in on defense, but then just a small also positive things when you win, maybe even when you lose the game, like we did against TSK because we lost close game, but we did all the best we can. So our meeting was quite positive because, you know, it's, uh, we, we did what we could and we ended up losing. But let's say this is small clip that we'll put this is who we are. We will not put now all our made basket. So we want ball movement, player movement, cutting, fill, re rebuilding the spacing, 
uh, moving without the ball. So this is who we are. And in next game and in next whole season, we really need to keep this segment uh, going. Now, post game analysis for head coach. Uh, after every game, there, we need a three and a half hours to log. Uh, usually I'm in charge of that part. And we will give to head coach, we have a lot of information, but we break down to those. Offensive set, how we score from, type of plays that we score from, two points, three points, free throws, uh, assist, uh, turnovers, uh, fouls received, block received, possessions, points, and points per possessions. Then type of play breakdowns, 12 things of pick and all defense, which we use the most, uh, five things of um, post-up, Def uh, offense, sorry, I said defense again. Of post up offense, what we use the most. Uh, isolation situation, how many and what we are doing. Uh, transition, in transition, those six segments that we are doing, cuts from which situations are coming, how we reacted on which type of defense, how we reacted on which type of spacing, double tag, single tag, empty corner, Spain, uh, rejecting the screen. So, what was our regular statistic on it? Shooting chart, uh, what again help us for player development, player uh, scouting. So, sorry, catch and shoot. Uh, how many from extra pass? How many from pick and roll? How many from pop? How many from short roll extra pass? How many from spot up uh, guy passing? How, so, how our shooting chart and shooting technique look in this game? And then, uh, which defense we play the best, which I didn't put, but we can also have post defense, ISO defense. So we are logging all those things, uh, pick and roll hedges, uh, roll men, uh, pick and roll. So like we have everything ready, but we give those informations to head coach and which player cost us defensively the most. And for every number you have, you see it here, we have ready clips on our program and in our uh, video. So uh, in our computer. So after that, a couple of games happened. Uh, and now we are we prepare half season report for coach, and we will tell him okay our most effective offense, uh, how most played offense, most score mainly we are scoring from this offense, uh, offense L five breakdown shooting chart over there, which player is scoring most in L five, which play type we have in L five. So it's a pick and roll offense, but we end up having isolation in it, for example. Uh, Team defense received points per possession. In which defense? Uh, in which defensive situation? Is it pick and roll blue? But uh, in blue, generally, roll guy is not scoring, but we struggle having a closeout guy running on the closeout. We have a sure. Then we have these individual things that you already saw that coach decided we will show some, some of it to the player. Then pick and roll defensive stars from which, how much per game, how many. 10 points he allows, how many contested shots he has, how many block shots, how many charges, hustle plays the player is having, and then how many, all those things in which defensive situation player has, we, we show to the head coach on half season. Some things we take more, some less, so we make a judgment, but we have all those re information needed if ready. Then again, uh, here we did uh, analysis of which pick and roll defensive player are best. So if you see those three guys are three bigs, this is three guards. So how is our pick and roll defense when they are uh, guarding the screener? How is when they are guarding on ball? So who is most effective? Most effective is combination of Apic and uh, Kulagi. And then we saw the video and uh, we see, it's not their guy scoring. It's their, one is on ball defender, one is screener defender. Uh, then in general, pick and roll defense breakdowns, uh, with the spacing, so which spacing we receive most point from, so is it single tag, double tag, so something that we should maybe work on, practice more, coach or no, or, you know, just information for us, how to shape the process and what to focus on. And then we struggled one year against zone, and then we broke down against zone, which player is scoring most effective against zone, which offense is effective, which is less effective as end zone, so all those kind of things types after a certain period of the time we will present and show to the coach. And then uh, we will have a post-season. So season ended up. What we do to the head coach, we prepare him video playbook that we will later on maybe, more, maybe use for our uh, introduction meetings. 
So season ended up. This is our playbook from five on five. So if you remember, we, we had a playbook from five on zero because players love to see themselves also more than seeing another guys. And it gives more trust, let's say, when you are focusing on them more than on, on another guys, uh, obviously. So if you can choose that, choose that. So this is, let's say, our back then offense. And for each offense, we have prepared for a head coach playbook on the end of the season. And then if you are in system, this is something that I am very big believer in. Uh, if you are in system, long-term system. Uh, we had a year, Euro Cup year here with coach Sasha Brothers that was very successful. If somebody asked me, it was very successful. We lost the final by luck. So, okay, we didn't maybe deserve, deserve whatever, but it was a good season. We had a 28 victories in a row. We came in the final without losing the game. We lost the final in the last seconds. You know, it happens, but season, and the season was very good. Anyhow, in order to go next season, let's prepare to the head coach. What well, was kind of different? Small points. If he wants, if GM wants, okay, let's discuss, let's see. So this is our win-loss game pick and roll analysis. So if you see here during the whole season in all game we won, we had less pick and roll ball handler involvement compared to the games we lost. And then it's a summer, you work individually with players, but you work on yourself as a coach. Then you see the clips, okay, in those lost games when pick and roll ball handler was uh, using more uh, game than uh, in uh, one games. Let me see those clips. Then you see the clips and then you see it's a defensive adjustments, for example, or bad lineup, or, you know, you develop yourself as a coach. Sometimes you did best you can, but they defended, so the ball handler needed to keep the ball longer and take the ball, uh, take the shots for himself instead of passing to another. So, you know, after the season, you will have, this is small that when we are, we were watching analysis of the whole season that came across as a big difference win and loss game was you know more ball handler shooting compared in the situations we lost then uh, play type uh, or offenses in one loss games uh, lineups uh, minutes for example assist as you can see when we won the games we had uh, eight more assists what attached to pick and roll ball handler situation we stole, stole the game, we stole the ball more in one game than in lost games. So then we come to the conclusion, okay, when we are winning, we need a ball handler who is also capable scorer, but willing passer. So then we enter in recruiting process saying like, this is something we really want to, or keep the same guy because it was a good season. It's not the thing that we will have hard time changing or adjusting. You cannot control everything, obviously, or but you want to have uh, some idea by making that analysis for yourself. Then uh, we struggled in some part of the season in third quarter. So we break down like how this third, third quarter win, because if you see here, first quarter 25 points, second 23rd, and then jump on 19 and 17. For fourth quarter, it's maybe understandable, but why third quarter is uh, dropping down, which offenses, and then we came to conclusion this is not how we presented to coach. We came to conclusion that coach in third quarter, we play less L5 and fast breaks compared to first two quarters. You know, it's something, this is the video for you. We sent him, you know, just check. Does the defense reacted better? Did we just got more tired or more comfortable with the lead or whatever? You know, it's just postseason thing that uh, can help you, obviously, in your development. And then last thing, after all those things, uh, in postseason, it starts process of recruitment that you are doing with GM and the coach, and that's third topic because unfortunately, at team scouting, I will not be be able to show you now. But sorry, if I advertise another, you have on on, on around now. Uh, uh, you can check on Google or see it. But uh, then it's a recruitment process that it's also a little bit different process than uh, self-scouting and team scouting. And I would say this is three, three topics of scouting that will uh, you as a system coach need to cover and you as a, as a system coach can contribute that your team and organization become uh, successful. Do you emphasize player's strength? or improving his weakness? If both, what are the percentage of each? Uh, Will this vary every level in high school, amateur pro, does it vary? Uh, it does, uh, high school level, uh, develop the player, develop him. 
So do all the things that he's not good at, try to improve. On a amateur level, same, try to become, like when we were in Denmark, we will, in our organization, we got the green light, for example, to play certain players on position that are not their natural position in order to develop them. We obviously lost some games or some one game at that time uh, because I wasn't brave enough to go longer, to be honest. But, uh, you know, you will maybe, if you have support, uh, play players out of position in, uh, in certain levels in order to develop. But if your organization is a winning organization that wants high level of victories and winning, then you need to go to specialization. Then, then you master the things. Then uh, you, like Johnny O'Brien, you bring the guy and you say, okay, this is what you are good at. I want to put you in position that you are best at continuously and to do things you are good at. I don't want you now to do out of this something because, you know, you will be very efficient in it. But in organizations that they allowed, if, for example, like in Ulm, I have a, my, head, uh, my head coach over there is my friend. They have a Killian Hayes. It's a, a point guard over there, the draft prospect. So they were losing against Alba Berlin 12 points in the halftime. The guy had a three, four turnovers. They kept him playing. They gave him more freedom. They allowed him to take some shots that he doesn't feel comfortable with in order to develop. It paid off in that game. They came back. They almost won the game. It was against one of the top teams and now guys on the draft. So, you know, for a player, maybe age of 19, 17, 18, if you see they have talent, keep developing, keep developing, even some players 22, 23. But for players on professional players on EuroLeague level, I would say 80% of those guys are staying in technique and skills that they already have last five, six seasons. There is a, they're just becoming slightly better or much better in things they were already feeling comfortable with. You will rarely see player, for example, non shooter becoming extra great shooter. You will see him like being more smart when to shoot, if it makes sense why I'm saying so. Yes. Santos from uh, CSKA and Darush Shafak is not, certain. he's from Cuba originally, not the best shooter, but he just came to the stage of his career that he knows when to take those jumpers. So he's not forcing them anymore, like in youth age, he's just taking more time, taking those shots when he got in the game with the strengths he has so he just changed his game and uh, developed his mindset so i would say for those shaped players just uh, you know understanding of the game is better so they will know how to utilize their strengths but for players that are younger keep developing them keep developing them and once you find what they are very good at give a little bit extra focus on that but don't miss miss another part uh, just not in the same volume because you want to develop as best possible player uh, he can be. Do your team sign players directly from the NCAA? Um, actually, in Denmark, uh, we did. That was our channel. We took the guys from Baylor, Nebraska. And, uh, it was Wichita also. But here, uh, usually no, because uh, there is GMs and coaches. Uh, they believe their need for period of adjustments on professional basketball, not necessarily on the European, but just being a professional paid player. Uh, so it needs period of adjustment, and it does. So here we don't do. But I had in past only rookies, if we can how we call it in in season. So in past I had it, but on this level we 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 don't we still didn't do it. Okay, which program do you recommend, or what 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 program do you use for scouting? Uh, uh, to make, uh, to make analy analytics, I do a sideline EXPS sideline program, and uh, to do uh, extra videos with uh, <clears throat> nice design, I recommend pro video editing programs like Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, whatever you are using, from which computer. But for in terms of analysis of the game, I use sideline. I pretty much familiar with uh, Spanish program and uh, sport code. The Spanish program is, I think, called is NASCAR, NASCAR or something like that. That they use it in Spain, sport code is whole NBA, but I feel comfortable with this one because I made my formula that I feel comfortable that will give me all those uh, analytics together with the video. So I'm using sideline for analytics and I recommend Final Cut or the Premiere for, for video editing. Although you have those clip draws or coaches paint and many more now coming on the market. I try all those, but I'm feeling most comfortable with, uh, with those I'm using, and as I told you. Uh, we're, uh, unfortunately, we're down to our like 
five five to seven minutes, Coach. Uh, do you have more on your uh, presentation, or we just continue with the question and answer? Go with the let's go with the question because uh, you know my whole next presentation is uh, <laughs> a whole new one topic actually that I will unfortunately not be able to cover now. It's a team scouting. What we do, it's a bit. It's completely uh, different topic, so you know. Yes, yes. Uh, we can uh, tackle that in another uh, session with you, maybe if you are, you have time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But uh, you know, on the questions. At the uh, pro re level, uh, how many scouts or coaches will be ideal? Uh, can you repeat the question? Sorry. How how many are you and uh, how how many scouts or coaches in the pro? Uh, all this work that you saw, it's two of us covering. Uh, so I have a guy who is helping me, uh, but one season we had a one more guy helping me. But I would say, from my experience, that two can cover all this work. Uh, but if you obviously have in our staff, we have a lot of staff, uh, big staff, but only this specific thing that I presented together with team scouting, it's uh, two guys covering all this work. And I think with a good uh, skill set and organization, two guys can cover it. But if you we can afford to have four, to be honest. In our club, we can have four easily. But at the moment, we are using uh, resources for another. Like we, I'll be honest, we divide the player development department in the way that in our club, player development coaches are not focusing on scouting at all. What I believe it's not like we had a conflict. Don't don't get me wrong. You know, I believe as I presented here, it's a it's a synergy. You cannot be player development without knowing self-scouting and scouting and what to teach, how to teach, to use those tools. So at the moment, our two individual development coaches are not part of the scouting or self-scouting. So we will present them what we made for guys that they have. For some of them, they will do a little bit their own video, but we will also have our own players that we, or at least me, that I'm focusing on during the season. But to answer on the question too is, uh, more than enough for all this work and one person with uh, good practice can cover at least 70% of what I presented. Uh, just a curiosity of, of, of some of our attendees, how does a scout start in Europe or how do you get hired as a scout? Well, it, basically the difference in terminology, uh, you know, they, in NBA scouts are guys that they observe the let's say the talent as i said on the beginning of presentation a process of evaluation of talent that can benefit to our organization if you sign him uh, in europe that that kind of thing doesn't exist in so ma many measures but all other kind of people who are doing video scouting or scouting on a phone and they are assistant coaches and then it's more how you get to, to become assistant coach if that's the question how you can do those things how you can do those things in Europe, it's uh, first of all, I will say, same as a player, you need to have some skill set that will divide you from others, not a lot, but at least some. And then uh, you need to have what, in my opinion, is the most important, it's a social intelligence that will connect you to the people, mainly to the head coaches and then head coaches to hire you in their staffs. And that's, I would say, this is the, the two things, social intelligence and connection uh, with the head coaches and then some skill set that will give you situation to be helpful for the organization. If you want to be a scout that will help GMs to re uh, in recruitment process in Europe, at the moment that's free market because there's not a lot of people and a lot of clubs like that. So if you have high level of understanding of uh, players on the market, not just Europe, uh, NBA, NCAA, Asia, if you know all those, they're not just basketball informations, Intel, like, who are they are as a person, how family background, you know, that's a great, and people are lacking those. Even though we live in global world, and I hope it stay global after this corona time, uh, it's still, you don't know everything about the players. So if you are the guy who can connect people and uh, have a lot of information about the players in the recruitment process, you can easily find the job in Europe and then later on in, in MBA as, as, as well, I believe. Uh, most of the attendees wants a copy of your presentation. For sure, for sure. I'm always okay, sure so. to share. It's not, uh, not uh, you know, if you guys have something to send to me, everybody who was in clinic or you, you Ariel or, or Teddy, you know, I will be more than happy that you send me 
your work or something because I think life is about giving and sharing. So I'm, you know, you have my presentation, give to Thank whoever. You. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Uh, for the final question, Teddy, can you ask your question for the final question before we uh, wrap it up and uh, uh, for Coach here to answer your final question? Thanks, Coach Ariel. Uh, coach, um, I asked this earlier, uh, what, uh, given your experience in Europe and in many other leagues, what are the five qualities that a basketball coach should possess in order to be successful? Well, Thank you. I would say that the basketball coach uh, in my opinion, need to be a leader. And so it's, uh, he need to lead, not to be boss. He need to be a leader, the guy who will be all trust and believe in. And uh, saying that he need to sacrifice the first one who will sacrifice for, for everybody because he cannot just be dictator who will say people what to do without being the one doing it in terms of you know, both practices, behavior, uh, being, being late on practices or, or behaving towards the people, referees, uh, GMs, uh, players. So he need a to good, lead the a way. Good example. Mm -hmm. He need to lead the way because it will reflect to, to us. You know, if he's energetic leader, we will all be energetic. If he's a quiet leader, it's also not bad, we will, but it will reflect to us. We will also follow that, but just a more maybe sophisticated way, being uh, more quiet. And then from leader, he needs to be communicator. He needs to, to communicate with everybody. So nobody is, uh, everybody is important. No one is less important than another. And it's a hard job. You know, I got the opportunity to be one month head coach interim. It, it was very hard, you know, in the way that you need to talk with every player, with every assistant coach, with uh, everybody in the office. Every, because that's what I believe you need to do. You need to be communicator, leader communicator, to care about the people, to show interest in the people, because if you want people to help you, you need to be the f first one reaching and first one uh, helping. Then I would say you need to be disciplined uh, in everything what you do. You need to show high level of discipline as a head coach, as a coach, as a person in general, because uh, it will reflect to others. They will see that you are disciplined and then they will demand and show nothing less than what you are showing. And then uh, you need to have very high energy in everything what you do, I believe. So if you come as a head coach with low level of energy and then you say to your guys, hey guys, we are playing without the energy. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's third, say it's you, it reflects from the coach. So you need to have this charisma, energetic charisma. It, it doesn't need to be aggressive, don't get me wrong. And there is different type of uh, energy, I believe so, but they need to feel that positive uh, high energy uh, that, that you are, that you have as a coach and it will reflect and then they will also perform. And then uh, last, all those things, uh, you need to be people friend. You don't, you cannot be as a head coach, uh, first people enemy, you know, that everybody is listening to you by not saying loving or hating you, but that everybody listening to you because paycheck is coming. You know, you need to be their friend. You need to be there for them. And it comes back to being a leader because best leaders I believe are also uh, best friends for for all the world because okay I know Steve Jobs is maybe not nicest person by the books and everybody what they were saying but he's our friend because he made our life easier right so making iPhone he's still our friend because he he helped us uh, being a leader being a friend so I will then break it down being a leader being a great communicator being disciplined high energy person and uh, people friend that will be my five points for successful head coach. Thanks, Coach. Thank you so much, Coach. Uh, again, uh, I would like to thank you for uh, joining us. I know we um, we uh, tackled one, half of the presentation, but uh, we'd like to thank you for spending your time with the Filipino coaches and with coaches here uh, from Southeast Asia that are tuning and other coaches uh, internationally. Um, uh, I'll give you the floor for a um, final remarks, Coach. Again, we'd like to thank you. Uh, thank you guys you know let's let's connect everybody who was here thank you Ariel, teddy i will ask teddy how you said a uh, personal matchup that's the the sentence you you used just as a reminder right coach uh personal matchup I, the question i asked earlier was yeah uh let's see. yeah i remember question just the sentence you said personal matchup so that's how you so I just wanted yes, to, and, and thanks for that. So I also managed to, through your question, it get me thinking for some things. So I also believe I managed to develop myself during this uh, very
webinar and let's stay in touch, help each other and uh, just raise up this situation the best we can. Of course, coach, anything I can do to help. Thank you so much, coach. And uh, again, for our attendees, uh, we have uh, um, another our last um, uh, webinar for tonight at uh, 8 p.m. with the Czech Republic coach, uh, Coach Nino. You, uh, Of course, if you enjoyed Coach Bogdan's uh, presentation, you'll also enjoy Coach uh, Nino's presentation uh, for tonight. Again, uh, if, um, for those who want to help the uh, frontliners, uh, Blackwater's got a um, program for the frontliners of the Pasig City General Hospital. Make sure you visit our uh, Facebook uh, page. And uh, again, thank you so much, Coach. And to our uh, attendees, uh, see you again. Eddie, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon and good night, everyone.